Today, we're going to do the Kiddush portion of Bereshis as we're getting a jump on Bereshis. Baruch Atah Adonai Yolohinu Melech Olam Sha'ako Niyah B'dvorim As we've been doing all week, we've been getting a jump on Bracious because next week on Monday we're going to start from the second portion. The very bottom of 16, the very top of 17. Here, here, right here. So this begins with the famous Yom Hashishi, which is the last two words which we learned yesterday, and we go into chapter 2. By Yechulu, and they were finished, Hashamayim, the heavens, Yoaretz, and the earth, Vachal Tzvom, and all of their hosts. Verse 2, By Yechal Elohim, by Yom Ashvi, and God completed. Hashem finished on the seventh day, Melachto, his work, Asherosa, which he did, by Yishpais, and he rested by Yom Ashvi on the seventh day. Mikol Melachte, from all of his labor, Asher also, which he did. Two, Rashi, by Yechal, Elohim, by Yom Ashvi, God finished on the seventh day. Now this suggests that God went into the seventh day. If a human being would do that, it would be a violation of Shabbos. So Rashi says, Reb Shimon Omer, Reb Shimon says, Bo Sabadom, a man of flesh and blood, Shani Yadeya Ito Vergov, he can't be precise. Sarach Lahaysi Mechel Akedish, we always have to add a few minutes from the mundane to the holy. That's why we start Shabbos early and we finish it late. That's why to us Shabbos is not 24 hours. If we knew exactly when the day begins and exactly when the day ends, Shabbos could be 24 hours. Our Shabbos is 25 hours. Because to be safe, we begin 18 minutes before sunset. And to be safe, we finish after stars out. But Hashem is different. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be He, God Almighty. Sheyedeya ita vurugov. God knows His times and moments. He knows the moment which separates day from night. Nichnas Bay Hashem, allegorically speaking, can enter into Shabbos, Kichut Saira, like a thread of a hair, exactly at the end of the sixth day. Venira, and to the naked eye, it appears, Kilo Kilo Bay Bayim, as if he finished on that day. That's one interpretation. Dabarachar, another interpretation. Now that the six days of creation were complete, what was the world lacking? Menucha rest. Ba Shabbos, or as we say today, rejuvenation. The greatest gift that Shabbos gives the Jewish people is that it enables people to shut down and to turn off the iPhones and the Blackberries, and the computers, and the cell phones, and the business, and to shut down and to rejuvenate with all the spellings of Jew. To get new strength and new energy. And that is how a human being can remain sane in today's day and age, spending one day a week with Hashem, in Torah study, in prayer, with family, with loved ones, Eating, drinking, resting, studying, meditating. That's the gift of Shabbos. Boss Shabbos, when Shabbos comes, Boss Menucha, rest comes. Kol Savanigmar Amalacha, the labor, the work was ended and completed. Verse 3. I'll just take a moment to share a beautiful story about Shabbos. My father, a blessed memory, Rabbi Sholem Gordon, was an emissary of the previous Rebbe and then of the Rebbe for some 60 years in Newark, New Jersey. When the Rebbe first became Rebbe in the early 1950s, there was a family in Newark 
who came to my father and said that they are survivors, Eastern European survivors from the other side, and they're here in America now, and they work very hard, and they have one and only daughter, and they would like my father to set up an appointment for them to see the Lubavitcher Rebbe, who recently became the Lubavitcher Rebbe, who had established a reputation of giving blessings that are fulfilled, because they want to ask the Rebbe for a blessing that their daughter find her shidduch, that their daughter find her bashert, and she able she be able to marry and establish a family as people do. My father said, of course, with pleasure. Back then it was not very difficult to set up the appointment, and in the right time the couple came and visited the Rebbe and asked for a bracha that their daughter, who was not that young anymore, should find a mate. The Rebbe entered into conversation with them, and he said, what do you do? And they said, we are storekeepers. That's what most Jews did in the 1950s in Newark. They had retail stores. And the Rebbe said, what about Shabbos? Is the store closed on Shabbos? And, my, and, and the couple said, you know, retail, America, Shabbos is the biggest day. So the Rebbe said, close the store on Shabbos and your daughter will find her mate. So they said, Rebbe, we'll be very honest with you. When our daughter finds a shidduch, then we'll close the store on Shabbos because then we won't feel the pressure of having to have the money to support her and to establish her and to help her get established. As soon as she finds a shidduch, we'll close the store on Shabbos. But until then, it's difficult. So the Rebbe said, and what if God wants it to happen the opposite way? And that was the stalemate that they walked out on. My father was waiting outside, and my father says, No, what do you say to uh, my Rebbe? How did you enjoy the experience? They said, quite frankly, Rabbi Gordon, we're not too impressed. We're used to Rebbe's in Eastern Europe. You give them a few dollars, and they give you a blessing, and they don't get involved in what do you do for a living, and is the store open Shabbos, and the store not open Shabbos. This Rebbe, he's very, very intrusive. They want to know what we do for a living. He wants to know, and is it open Shabbos? You know, have a good day. We're frustrated. And they went on their way. And the store continued to be open on Shabbos. And the young lady continued to be unable to find her bashert until, I believe it was in 1967, check your Google computers, in 1967, the great Newark riots took place where the entire community of Newark was burned to the ground, especially the stores where the Jews were, and the store burned down. The following Shabbos came, the store was closed only because it was in ashes. And the week after that, she found her shidduch, so that the words of a tzaddik came about, that God wants, first close the store, and then she'll find the shidduch. Baruch Hashem, although she was advanced in age, from the early 50s to the late 60s, but she merited to marry and have a family, and today she has grandchildren, and this is an amazing testament to the fact that Shabbos brings tremendous blessings, and when a tzaddik says, what are you going to do? Maybe God wants the store should first close the store, and then the blessings will come. We know that Shabbos observance brings with it tremendous blessings. Verse 3, the closing verse here, Vayavodach Elohim, and God blessed. That's Yom Ashvi, the seventh day. Vayakadosh Yisrael sanctified it. Kivei, because on that day, Shabbos, he abstained, he rested. In abstaining, become a of all of his labor, all of his work. Asher Boro Elohim, which God created, Lasos, to make, to do. Rashi, Vayavodach, Vayakadosh, Birche Bamon. How did God bless it? With the manna, because later when God brought manna from heaven, there was a double portion that came Erev Shabbos. That's why to this day we have two chalas. We have Lecha Mishnah on our Shabbos table. Because every day of the week, one measure came down for every head, every person in the family. And on the sixth day, Lecha Mishnah, there was a double portion. And he sanctified it with manna 
Friday there was double manna, Shabbos there was no manna. Shalayed et klal b'Shabbos, and that is an, a, 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 an introductory allusion, a hint to the fact that we have to celebrate Shabbos be, by being mechabed Shabbos. We have to honor Shabbos by putting on special Sabbath garments and having a Sabbath meal and upgrading everything we do on Shabbos. We also have to keep Shabbos by that zochor, and then we also have to do shomor, and that is to abstain from labor on Shabbos. Here, already by creation, the Torah speaks about the futuristic miracle of double manna on Friday and no manna on Shabbos. The work which is fit to do on Shabbos. Kofal, he did double, he did it on Friday, as it says in Medrash. And by the way, when we look into the Medrash and we see in the Medrash, we see the word lasos, Rashi in Medrash brings down lasos litakin, that God causes us, the human being, to partner with him for tikkun olam, to make the world a better place, so that God creates a world, he creates man, and then he gives man the task of making the world a better place in partnership with Hashem through Torah and through mitzvahs, and it is the privilege of the Jew to bring this Torah and the mitzvahs and the message of the light of Torah and the seven Noahide laws to all the nations of the world, and may we merit to see Moshiach Tzitkenu Bimheir Yameinu Amen. Amen.